Around 500 years after his death, stories began circulating of miraculous portraits that had been made while Jesus still walked the earth. The most revered of these were images said to have come into being miraculously, not made by human hands. In one popular story, King Abgar, ruler of Edessa in Syria, fell ill. He sent a messenger to bring the miracle-working Jesus to his kingdom to cure him. Since Jesus could not go there, the messenger attempted to paint Christ's likeness, but the glory streaming from his face prevented it. So Christ took a cloth and pressed it to his face. His countenance remained. In Greek, the cloth became known as a mandilion. When King Abgar looked upon the desired image, he was healed and became a believer. Treasured as a relic, something Jesus had touched, the mandilion was also valued as proof that Christ himself permitted the practice of image making, that it was legitimate for artists to paint images of the deity as they could not in the Jewish or Islamic faith. The Greeks brought the Mandelion to the imperial capital, Constantinople, in the 10th century and housed it in a chapel in the imperial palace where it became the most revered relic for the next 250 years. In 1204, the Crusaders sacked and looted Constantinople and the Mandelion disappeared forever. But copies of it and copies of copies abounded, each thought to carry some part of the original supernatural power. One early replica of the Mandilion, made in Constantinople, was donated to a monastery in the Italian city of Genoa in 1384. There it still resides. Protected by a silver frame, the ghostly image was understood to be a true likeness of the Savior, and it affected representations of Christ throughout the Christian world. Every Christian was eager to see images of Christ. From early Christian times, voices were raised against making and venerating such images. In the Byzantine Empire between 726 and 843, images of Christ were outlawed. One faction within the Byzantine church banned all further use of icons on pain of death. All existing images had to be smashed, covered over, or thrown into the fire. 